This one came out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting it, but this could well be the most impressive AMD graphics card I've seen for some time. So consider this. What if the Radeon team produced a GPU that had very similar ray tracing performance to the Nvidia offering for the same money? What if rasterization performance was a lot better, a whole lot better, better even than the next most expensive Nvidia graphics card? And finally, what if that card shipped with 16 gigs of frame buffer memory up against the 12 offered by Nvidia? Enter the AMD Radeon RX 7900 GRE, priced at $550, um, just like the RTX 4070. It's broadly equivalent in RT performance, but quantifiably a whole lot better in basically every other benchmarking dimension. This is what we really like to see, an ultra-aggressive AMD really making life difficult for the market leader, actually offering consumers genuine choice. A bit like the RX 7800 XT, actually. And you'd be right, the GRE's MSRP is $50 higher than the 7800 XT, but it's actually delivering proportionately more value even than the XT. AMD being even more aggressive then, to the point where it's not just competing with 4070 and 4070 Super, but even with the 7800 XT. Uh, the GRE seems to have been parachuted in, in the wake of the Super refresh from Nvidia. GRE stands for Golden Rabbit Edition, <laughs> um, as it's a repurposed product designed for the Chinese markets and selected OEMs. But now it's a retail product available at a massively compelling price point. Uh, specs wise, it's essentially a further cut down version of the RX 7900 XTX and XT based on the Navi 31 processor. Similar to those cards, the GRE is based on a chiplet design, a 5 nanometer compute processor surrounded by separate 6 nanometer memory controllers. The XTX has 6 of those MCDs active, GRE 4, 384-bit interface becomes 256-bit, 24 gigs of VRAM drops to 16. Cutbacks to the compute die, the GCD, are rather more restrained. 96 RDNA3 CUs in the XTX dropped to 84 in the XT, with a further haircut to 80 in the GRE, and that's accompanied by lower clocks. End result? Product that in performance terms sits in between 7800 XT and 7900 XT. But at the GRE's $550 price point, this is really, really interesting because this market sector is now delivering properly game-changing performance up against the consoles. Recently, we've sought to look at GPU performance on a per-title basis uh, more holistically by comparing performance with the output of the PS5 on match settings, a prime target platform for developers. We isolate titles where we can get a settings match between console and PC, then locate areas where PlayStation 5 fails to hit its performance target, where we found the limits of GPU performance. Then we match those circumstances on PC, unlock the frame rate, and see what kind of performance multipliers we get. And they are significant, believe me. But remember, of course, you can deploy that extra horsepower however you like. More fidelity, higher resolution, all good stuff. Uh, first up, Alan Wake 2's PS5 quality mode is essentially PC's medium settings at 4K output using FSR2 balance mode. The console's sub 30 FPS readout in this selected scene moves beyond 60 FPS on 7900 GRE and 4070 Super. GRE has a 2.29x performance multiplier over PS5, dropping to 2.15x on the more expensive 4070 Super. With no RT in play, the AMD offering beats Nvidia by around 12 percentage points. And remember, that's the more expensive product. Meanwhile, in match settings in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, the GRE offers 88% more performance than PS5, rising to 2.33 times on the RTX 4070 Super, thanks to its superior RT throughput. That's a 24-point NVIDIA advantage over AMD. It's worth pointing out here we're looking at 720p internally upscaled with FSR 2 to 1440p. This is a challenging game, but ideally you'd be looking to up the resolution here on this class of GPU for sure. Sticking with ray tracing, a performance hotspot in Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty sees the PS5 fall beneath its 30fps target. Doesn't happen often, but it is there. 
Cyberpunk on console is a mixture of low, medium and high settings with RT local shadows enabled. Here the GRE offers 77% more performance than the console, rising to an even more impressive 2.21x performance multiplier on the 4070 Super. Um, that's 24% ahead of the GRE. Moving back to rasterization, 7900 GRE takes point in a Plague Tale Requiem as you would expect. PS5 has a 4K output here reconstructed from 1440p internally, running on medium settings with tweaked draw distances that we've matched on PC. 7900 GRE offers up a startling 2.16 times performance increase over PS5 in like-for-like -like testing, with the 4070 Super delivering 92% more frames than the console. But it's the more expensive GPU in this three-way, and the GRE is actually 12 percentage points faster. So a teaser of the head-to-head -to, -head to come up against 4070 Super, but more to the point, a demonstration of the kind of brute force performance you're getting against the baseline hardware AAA developers are actually targeting with their games. Um, let's go back and take a look at some more conventional benchmarking now. And we've got a quartet of great contenders in our performance visualizations here. RTX 4070, right now it's looking underperforming and overpriced. RX 7800 XT is an excellent alternative. And of course, there's the GRE and the 4070 Super. So, at the beginning of the video, I talked about equivalent RT performance at the same price. So let's try to prove that out. Uh, we'll be focusing on 1440p resolution in our tests here, but 1080p and 4K results are found in our accompanying Eurogamer text review with all the bar charts you could possibly want. Uh, kicking off with Dying Light 2, an interesting state of affairs with this one. Based on 1440p results, the GRE does well and it's on par with 4070 in terms of average FPS across the clip. But the 4070 is actually marginally ahead on denser scenes and behind in sparser content, which is quite interesting. Even so, the bottom line is that AMD is clearly competitive in a highly demanding ray tracing title. 4070 Super is more expensive, but offers a nigh on 21 percentage point lead. Also, uh, the GRE is delivering proportionately more performance for the money compared to the 7800 XT, which I guess is good for the GRE, but really, and I've said this many times now, value should scale higher with cheaper cards. And the same argument can obviously be leveled at the vanilla RTX 4070 too. Both are now looking a bit overpriced compared to their more expensive alternatives. Uh, looking at control, the RX 7900 GRE is up there with the 4070, uh, though the more attractive 4070 Super offers a nigh on 17 percentage point lead for 10% more money up against the GRE. Control also offers DLSS support and was never updated to support FSR2, meaning that unofficial mods are the only way to add upscaling support to the game for AMD and indeed Intel users, which is still a fantastic ray tracing showcase by the way. Interesting to see clear water between 4070 Super and everything else. 7800 XT at the bottom with 4070 and 7900 GRE locked in the center there with two products at the same price point. This is the kind of visualization where Nvidia should be sitting up and taking a bit of notice, I think. Cyberpunk 2077, the uh, GRE has issues here on ultra settings and we're veering off script here as the RTX 4070 is 18 points clear of the new AMD offering. This game's RT features are the culmination of a close collaboration between Nvidia and CD Projekt Red, so there's little surprise in seeing how optimal the GeForce cards perform relative to Radeon. Again, while the 4070 Super costs more, the GRE is designed to take it on, but the Nvidia card, it's streets ahead here. 40 percentage points to the better for circa 10% more money. And let's remember, we've also got path tracing as an option there. Uh, there are more RT scores in the Eurogamer review, more benchmarks in totality actually, and more resolutions covered. But what this general upswing in RT performance for the money with the GRE means is that ray tracing support that is trending above the norm on AMD gets a further boost. It's a good showing for AMD here in F122, for example, as the 7900 GRE is faster than the 4070 by around 11%. And in turn, that diminishes the 4070 Super's advantage to a mere four points. So maybe it's a bit reductive to say that the GRE is as fast as a 4070 with RT because, you know, there is a spread. 
Here in Miles Morales, for example, 4070 delivers a 10 to 11 point lead over the GRE, an advantage that doubles up to 20% or so gets 4070's super. You'll also note that the advantage over the 7800 XT uh, with the GRE, quite minimal. New offering is about seven points to the better. Now this is a rare example of the XT offering a bit more value for its price point. Now let's take a look at rasterization tests. And yeah, these cards can be very, very fast. All of them, but ultimately AMD does have the advantage here. Rasterization is where Radeon products typically excel and where we should fully expect to see RX 7900 GRE deliver a one-two punch of more performance for less money. A third punch, if you like, with that extra memory. So it is with Remedy's control, uh, where the RX 7900 GRE outscores 4070 Super by around 11%, and remember, it has a lower price, beating the price equivalent 4070 by 30% at the same MSRP. 30%! Great stuff for the GRE then. Though a bit frustrating to see that the cheaper 7800 XT Again, it's offering proportionately less performance for its price point. And I'm going to say it again, value needs to scale upwards on lower level cards, not downwards. 7900 GRE and 4070 Super, obviously both excellent, but it does look a little bit like an upsell, right? It's almost a shame to play Cyberpunk without upscaling and ray tracing at this class of hardware, given how transformative those technologies can be especially with frame generation and path tracing on RTX 40 series offering something genuinely new and different. Uh, state of the art, if you like. But sticking to rasterization does level the playing field for AMD. The 7900 GRE delivers excellent results here. It's leagues ahead, 27% faster than 4070 Super, and upwards of 40% to the better compared to the vanilla 4070. 40%. Again, the 7800 XT is getting the shaft here, as the GRE costs 10% more, for which you get 20% more performance. Next up, A Plague Tale Requiem, one of my favourite games of the generation. And yeah, it's perhaps not surprising that AMD continues to deliver a lead over Nvidia here, with RX 7900 GRE essentially 14 percentage points clear of the RTX 4070 Super, which costs more money of course. At price parity, with the non-Super 4070, 32% ahead. This is an entirely different class of GPU performance, really. And yeah, again, the only complaint you can really raise is that the 7800 XT now looks too expensive. The GRE is 10% more expensive, yet delivers 18 points more performance. So one thing keeps coming up in this review, the concept of value, right? And many of the press express this in terms of cost per frame. Average all of your performance scores compared to MSRPs and away you go. The problem with averaging frame rates is that, well, frame rates are non-linear. The difference between 30 FPS and 60 FPS is 30 FPS, right? Um, it's a reduction of 16.7 milliseconds in frame time. However, the difference between 170 and 200 FPS is also 30 FPS, right? Where the time difference is just 0.88 milliseconds. This could skew your results when it comes to calculating cost per frame, right? So we remove that distortion via normalization, average all the scores for a particular game from all the GPUs tested, then assign a variance to that average for each card. This eliminates the distortion I just described, enabling a more consistent normalized quote unquote cost per frame. So here's how our four contenders in this review look with standard cost per frame and the normalized calculation. Uh, whichever way you want to calculate it, the RX 7900 GRE offers the lowest cost per frame, uh, while the vanilla non-super RTX 4070 offers the highest. Really, these values should be scaling with price point, and it's clear to see that both AMD and Nvidia are upselling you to their more capable products. They're offering better value. It is what it is, but outside of these stark numbers, what you're seeing here is a clear choice being offered to GPU buyers in this particular market sector. If you enjoy Nvidia's features, and I do think stuff like DLSS, RTX, HDR, and all of the rest of it, well, that has value, right? Uh, the 4070 Super was, and still is, a great product. But similar to the 4070 versus 7800 XT battle from a few months back, the GRE is offering an excellent alternative. It's undeniably significantly faster, 
sometimes a lot faster than the 4070 at rasterization. And generally, it beats the 4070 Super as well. It's got the VRAM you'd want for a good degree of future proofing. And while the 4070 Super is well ahead with raid facing in most scenarios, the fact that AMD is competitive with Nvidia's products that sits at the same price point and is so across a range of games, I think that's quite compelling. We've seen how all of these cards are transformative against the PS5 baseline we established earlier, and they all have their merits. But let's just hope that 7800 XT and vanilla 4070 are price adjusted soon. And that's all from me for now. Like, subscribe, share if you enjoyed the content. Uh, that bell notification makes vague promises about instant notifications, so see how that works out for you. And of course, Please do join us on the DF Supporter Program for high quality video downloads, early access to DF Direct Weekly, early access to a bunch of stuff actually, plus weekly updates from the team telling you exactly what we're up to and, you know, taking suggestions on what we should be looking at next. And of course, store.digitalfoundry.net for a range of merchandising that helps to support our endeavours. That's all for me on this one, so I'll just sign off as I usually do actually by saying, well, thanks for watching and supporting Digital Foundry.